Hi, welcome back to Advanced Elixir and OTP by Pact Publishing. In this section, we're going to be learning about processes, the building blocks for concurrent Elixir applications. We'll start by introducing the concept of process and how we represent them. We'll then proceed to see how we can launch and link processes to form process trees. Finally, we'll look at process messaging, which is exchanging messages between process instances. Let's get on with the first video, launching and linking. In this video, we'll learn about the definition of a process and what it means in terms of a language construct. We'll then learn how to spawn processes, which is launching them, and then finalize by linking processes so that child processes can propagate exceptions to the parent ones, effectively creating process trees. So starting with the question, what is a process anyway? And a kind of non-answer, but true all the same, everything in Elixir runs as a process. Even the interactive shell we've been using to test out our programs is effectively a process at heart. A process is effectively a native language construct provided by Elixir, one that allows executing code in an asynchronous fashion and in isolation. Think of processes as independent functions that run in the background at will. Representation-wise, each process possesses a unique PID or process ID which identifies it. You'll often come across it as being represented by three numbers separated by dots. These actually identify the process uniquely and tell us if the process is running on our current node or on a remote node. One thing to take into consideration is that an Elixir process is not an operating system process or even a thread for that matter. Elixir processes are much more lightweight than OS processes or threads and can be spawned and destroyed at a much faster rate with lower costs. An application can have many processes active and running at the same time and often does, as they are the building blocks for building scalable and concurrent applications in Elixir. The first few modules and functions we'll be looking at are the process module, which contains useful functions for manipulating processes, and the built-in spawn and self functions. Spawn is used to launch processes by passing a function, which is effectively the code that's going to be executed inside the process. Self, on the other hand, is used to get the reference or PID of the current running process. Let's start by launching an interactive console and check our process ID using the self function. We can assign the PID to a variable and then check if we're alive by using the process.alive function, which should return true. Let's try spawning a process next. We can use the spawn function, which takes a function, that's the process's body, and returns the process ID. And it should print the hello string as well as return the PID and a process terminates as soon as its function exits. We can check that by using the process.alive function again. We can create arbitrarily complex trees of processes by spawning processes from within other processes. This is sometimes useful for processes to split computations among each other and perform more complex use cases. However, spawning processes without any kind of liveness control can be a bit of a pitfall. If one of the processes on the tree fails, the other processes won't know about it having failed unless the parent of the failing process actively checks for the liveness of the child process, that is, running the process.alive function or some similar mechanism. This kind of defensive programming and implementing active safeguards against failure is not quite the philosophy of Elixir. In Elixir, you're often going to listen to the mantra, let it crash. This becomes even more true when dealing with large process trees, where each one contributes to the computation of a larger part. Obviously, just letting things crash without doing anything is bad, but the idea is that we can do a controlled recovery rather than actively monitoring every part of the application to ensure that everything is working. This mantra applies to processes as well, in what is known as linking. When a parent process is linked to a child process, the failure of the child process will also cause the error to be propagated to the parent process, allowing it to crash. This can be performed by using the spawn link function instead of regular spawn. Now, each parent process is linked with their respective children and will receive any failure that occurs in any of its child processes. Let's check the difference between spawn and spawn link. First, let's check our PID. Okay, now we're going to spawn a process using the spawn function and we're going to deliberately crash it. So, raising an error now. And we should see the error here. But our process, our shell process, did not crash because we, we use spawn, so the process is not alive and we are still with the same PID. Now we're going to do the same thing but using spawn link. Same function and it should crash. And as you can see, now a new shell has been respawned, which means that our PID has changed as we'd expected. 
and the PID that we used before is no longer available since this is a new shell.